Hello guys, today we'll be looking at the RSA program of Computer Networks Laboratory. So what is RSA? So RSA is an algorithm that is used for encryption and decryption. So what does RSA stands for? RSA stands for Rivest, Shamir and Adelman who are its inventors. So firstly RSA is used for encryption and decryption as it says. So we have two keys that is public key and private key. You can consider the public key as your personal email ID which is available to everyone including you. And the private key is your password which is only available to you and not everyone. So what happens is a uh, sender sends a plain text or a message which will be encrypted by using the public key of the receiver. That is he sends an email. So that is by using the uh, e uh, email ID which is the public key of the receiver so it will be encrypted at that time after which after encrypting the plain text is called as ciphertext so this is the encoded part of the plain text after which you ha have to decrypt before the receiver receives the mail for that it uses the private key of the receiver that is the uh, receiver um, gets the uh, mail by using his password so that happens during decryption and the receiver obtains the plain text that was sent by the sender because the receiver can't understand the ciphertext there needs to be a decryption model that has to take place in order for the receiver to understand what message the sender has sent so this is about rsa algorithm so in this program uh, you have the ciphertext and plain text to get the ciphertext you have the formula c is equal to m power e mod n and to get the and to get back the plain text you have m is equal to c power d mod n so how this works actually is firstly you will take two prime numbers suppose say uh, 3 and 13 which will be named which will be initialized to p and q after which you have to find the value of n n is the modulus of encryption and decryption so that is obtained by p star q that is p into q so you will do 3 into 13 which is 39 after which you have to find the value of z that is p minus 1 into q minus 1 which is 2 into 12 that is 24 uh, next you have you have to find the value of e so in order to find the value of e the e value should be less than whatever n value have obtained that is it should be less than 39 and the gcd of z comma e should be 1 that is uh, the common factors between z and e should only be 1 and not any other number so now um, seeing 24 and it should be less than 39 you can take e equals to 5 because 5 and 24 do not have any common factors other than 1 so you'll get the value of 5 after which you can get the value of public key public key is e comma n that is you've got the value of e that is 5 and um, the value of n that is 39 after which you'll find the ciphertext that is c is equal to m power e mod n uh, you know the value of m m is the message uh, that has to be encoded and decoded and sent to the um, receiver so the message will be given by the sender so it is 10 power 5 mod n value is 39 and after calculation you'll get it as 4 and then you have to find the private key that is d comma n you know the value of n but you do not know the value of d for this So to find the private key that is to find D what happens is you have the equation D into E mod Z equals to 1. So you know the value of E you know the value of Z and this is the equation. So you have to find the value of D you have to find the value of D's in such a way that it um, the equation is, e is evaluated to 1. So suppose you put this is um, this is obtained using trial and error method suppose you put d equals to 5 so 5 into 5 is 25 so 25 mod 24 you will get it as 1 so here you can obtain the value of d easily so this is trial and error method you won't be getting it so easily so d equals to 5 uh, that is why uh, the private key is 5 comma 39 after which you have to find the plain text again that is the receiver d 
equals it. So it is m equals to c power d mod n. So you know the value of c, you know the value of d, you have obtained an n. After substituting, you will get back the message whichever the sender has received. I mean sent. So that is equal to 10. That was the message sent and the last step you will get the same message back to the but the message will be sent to the receiver. So that was about the explanation for the RSA. Now coming to the program. So firstly we will start with the main. So here public static void main. You will pass the string arguments. After which you will specify the variables. Whichever it is required that is P, Q, Z. Then you have D equals to 0, E, N and I. Then you will uh, specify the variables, message, ciphertext and plain text. Then you will have the scanner class to obtain the um, input from the user. After which you will ask the user to enter the value of P and Q. So scanner.nextInt will have the value that is uh, given by the user stored in P. And the same goes with Q. After which you have the, uh, this is prime is a function where you will pass the p so this whatever result comes will be stored in a and same goes with q also whatever result comes in q goes with p so we'll go to the is prime function before going further so this is the function public static int is prime where you will pass the int number that is nothing but p and q will be passed inside here so firstly in the function we'll be defining the temp variable uh, after which uh, you will uh, define a variable is prime with a boolean type that will be specified with a constant that is true then you will run a for loop that for k equals to 2 k less than or equal to num by 2 k plus plus so suppose we will take a number say suppose 7 now 7 uh, firstly k equals to 2 so firstly it will check k that is 2 2 is less than or equal to num by 2. So num by 2 here is 7 by 2 that is nothing but uh, 3.5 which will round off to 3. That is uh, that condition is true after which what happens is uh, so it will check uh, num mod k num mod k. So what is num mod k? Num here is 7. So 7 mod 2 that will give rise to 1. So temp will be stored with 1. Then if statement. So if temp equals to equals to 0. No temp is not equal to 0. That is why it won't be executing here. So it will go back to the for loop. So again k is incremented. It will become k equals to 3. After which uh, you will have uh, 3 is less than or equal to 7 by 2. That is nothing but 3 again. So it is th the condition is true. So what happens is a uh, num mod k. That is 7 mod 3 which is equal to 1. So temp will be stored with 1. And if statement again, if uh, temp equals to equals to 0, it is not uh, 0. Th therefore, it will go again to the for loop. It will increment 4. Then you will check with 4 uh, is less than or equal to 3. It will be false because 7 by 2 is 3. So 4 less than or equal to 3, it is false. So uh, this won't be executed. Uh, the for loop comes out of the for loops and it will check if is prime equals to equals to false. It is not false because we have not entered this loop at all. I mean enter this if statement at all. We have uh, initially initialized is prime equals to true. Therefore, it will remain as it is. And uh, so it is not, uh, it will not oblige to this if statement. It will come to the else part. So in else part, what happens is uh, it will print uh, this number is a prime number. After which it will return the uh, num. So this happens and uh, um, suppose we say uh, let us take a number which is not prime number to check how it works. Uh, so suppose let us take 4. So 4 firstly uh, k equals to 2. So 2 is less than or equal to uh, 4 by 2. That is nothing but 2. So 2 less than or equal to 2. Yes the condition is true so it will come to temp equals to num mod k that is num is 4 so 4 mod 2 is equal to 0 so it will check the if condition if temp equals to equals to 0 yes it is true so it will uh, make is prime equals to false and it will break so again when it comes out of the for loop if is prime equals to equals to false since it has been changed here yes it is true so it will come to this if statement and it will print as number is not a prime 
so and it will return 0 so this is about the prime function so we'll go back to the main function again so here uh, whatever if number is written it will be stored in a and if suppose there is a 0 because the there is that is not a prime number it will be uh, put into uh, the following a or b so there is a if statement before we proceed that is a equals to equals to p and b equals to equals to q to make sure that the values of p and q have been properly been assigned to a and b and also if a not equal to b and b i mean a not equal to 0 and b not equal to 0 to check that uh, because in prime function what happens is uh, the function will return 0 if it is not a prime number so it will check this condition also if they are not equal then there it is not a prime number so it is if both the conditions are true it will go to the next one that is it will ask the user to enter the message so again uh, the whatever the user enters it will use the scanner object and it will be retrieved and it will be stored in message variable after which you calculate the n as it is done in the problem that is n equals to p star q and it will be stored in n and you calculate z that is p minus q sorry p minus 1 star q minus 1 that will be stored in z then we'll come to the do while loop so what happens here is you'll you'll ask the user to enter e such that e is less than n and gcd of z comma e should be equal to 1 so the user will enter by using the scanner object and it will be stored in e and then comes while condition what happens with well, the while condition will run until like uh, the gcd of z comma e is not equal to 1 until this become false it will be running so it will be asking the user to enter the value of e until and unless uh, that this condition is satisfied that is gcd of z comma e should be equal to 1 if that is not the case it will be running so that is why you have the while condition here so next we'll go to the gcd function so this is the gcd function that is it will pass int m comma n and if n equals to equals to 0 it will return m else it will return gcd of n comma m mod n so this is a repetitive function the function will be called until this you for you find the gcd value so this is about the gcd function so coming back to the main function you'll be assigning i equals to 2 and for this while loop is to find the value of d so that is while i star e mod z is not equal to 1 until then the, the condition should become false until then it will be looping and you'll get the value of uh, d here afterwards you'll print out the public key pair that is you have found out the value of um, e and n so you'll print that and next the private key pair that is the value of d you have found out it here and the value of n after which you need to find the ciphertext for that you will be having the function mult where you'll pass the parameters message comma e comma n which will be passed to ciphertext since uh, the ciphertext formula as you know it is c is equal to m par e mod n so you need all these parameters in order to find out ciphertext so that is why it will take uh, when once this is called it is it will go to the mult function so this is the mult function we will be passing uh, the parameters as you know according to ciphertext and there are three parameters so you have three variables to store in that after which you will be assigning in k equals to 1 and in j and you have a for loop this running from j j less than or equal to y that is uh, for the for loop this whole function is to find out the mod value which you are calculating so in order to find the ciphertext in total this function is used because mod value as you can get in the calculators it is not easy to get in the program that is why you you use this whole function to find out the mod value and find out and totally find out the ciphertext value so these whatever is written from that mult function will be stored in ciphertext and you have the system.out.println which is 
at last the ciphertext to be printed after which uh, the same thing goes for plain text where we'll be passing the ciphertext d comma n parameters to the multi function and whatever result comes will be stored in plain text then you have the print statement where it will print the plain text so this is about the program and uh, two more additional things is that the public uh, class should be included at the uh, starting of the uh, program and you should also import the scanner class that is import java.util.scanner so this is about the program thank you